On March 3rd, 2017, the third film in the Wolverine franchise opens up in theaters worldwide. And we're going to talk about how much money that movie might actually make in both the domestic and worldwide box office, so stay tuned. Hey YouTubers, and welcome to something a little bit different on my channel. Now today, I have with me once again, MJ from Geeklist TV, and he is going to join me, I'll let you say hi in a minute, man, he's going to join me for basically a very relaxed conversation about the box office potential of Logan. Uh, if for anyone who doesn't remember, a couple weeks ago, we actually did a video about our top 10 like most anticipated films of 2017 look coming forward and one of the movies that MJ said was he's really really looking forward to seeing Logan in his opinion he thinks it's going to be one of the sleeper hits of the year and you know honestly looking at some of the stuff that we brought up for this this discussion it's it's going to be really interesting to see where this movie ends up but uh, before I go any further MJ you want to say hi to everybody yes <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for anyone that doesn't know that's just what he does like he he doesn't he doesn't necessarily he'll get into it he'll get into it but so yeah guys this is a little bit different just kind of a, a more like i said more relaxed so uh i just want to kind of start this discussion off by saying that this is a movie coming out at the very beginning of march this year and for a lot of people who don't necessarily know one way or the other march has kind of been regulated to not necessarily i would say the start of the summer season. I know it's really kind of weird to imagine that that's the start of the summer season, especially since the summer season started uh, way back in the day where, you know, we had Star Wars movies coming out in Memorial Day weekend, and it's basically been pushed back ever so slowly, inch by inch, from essentially the Memorial Day in May to the beginning of May to in April-ish time, and uh, now somewhat, somewhat in... Uh, the beginning or end of March. Uh, technically, I bet, and I would actually argue that it's still in April, but that's not necessarily what we're talking about here. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know, it basically started with 300 uh, when it opened on March 3rd, 2007, opened to over 70 million, um, and went on to be a very big domestic hit. First time that any movie had actually made that much money in terms of Arch and, uh, in March. And it's the success has been repeated uh, when 2010 Alice in Wonderland also made 300 million uh, domestically first one in March to actually do that that was writing off the success of Avatar and then uh, you know in more recent years we've had basically the Hunger Games opening at the end of March the same thing with Batman versus Superman also opening at the end of March and last year's surprise hit was Zootopia opening at the beginning of March uh, respectively and ending up making a lot of money so there is a historical precedent that indicates whether or not like movies do really well based off what's going on and how things are sold the excitement for people and just an indication like i said 300 basically started this it was also a rated r comic book adaptation but while that might ha and also very stylistic the same way that logan is and while that they might be similar in that respect there's a lot going on that would either either hurt or like hinder or make Logan uh, a huge success so that's what we're going to talk about today and uh, before we go on uh, before we go on obviously I want to ask I want to ask MJ uh, obviously you've seen the the Logan trailer yes <laughs> uh, what are your what are your thoughts on that in terms of uh, how they're selling this particular superhero movie uh, if if that's what we're what we have to call it, just based on categorizing uh, certain genres, what are your thoughts on that, uh, both stylistically and uh, just in terms of, I guess the the creative direction. Do you think it's selling? Do you think that just artistically? Do you think it's selling? Do you think audience are gravitating towards it? I think so because usually when you look at uh, superhero trailers. You see, like, a lot of, like, hardcore, fast-paced action. This is very much, very much, and I told this to you in our uh, predictions video that we did, or our, you know, films uh, of 2017, right? That it's almost mm -hmm. like The Last of Us, you know what I mean? I know it's sort of a very generic opinion to kind of have because everybody and their mom is saying that. You can see it on Instagram, social media, everywhere. But not only that, when you talk about the style and like the location and the way it's set, you know what vibe it kind of gave me other than The Last of Us? True Detective. 
like looking at the way like if you go back and watch that trailer like the opening with like the showing of like logan's hands and like you get like a lot of shots of like the woods and like the open fields and stuff reminds me so much of the build-up to the first season of uh true detective and i like that because that is a very different take on these type of films you know what i mean this seems very serious and this is very uh hugh jackman uh oriented this is going to revolve directly around him and i mentioned before that i think a lot of what's going to sell this is maybe not to the casual audience but more so to the hardcore audience is that this is the last time we're going to see hugh jackman in a film with patrick stewart so i think it'll be cool to see them actually this will be like their last hoorah you know what i mean and they're going all out with this like i'm sure we're going to get those fast-paced action scenes we're going to get a lot of logan kicking ass we're going to get a lot of wolverine moments but looking from this it's going to be those two and they're set in a very different world, and I'm kind of digging that. I really am. And I think that's a selling point. I think that's what people are really going to... I feel like people, once they go see it and actually see the movie, I think by word of mouth, it's just going to go around, well, you know, Logan was awesome. Dude. You need to go check that out. From a critic point of view and from a fan point of view, I feel like this is going to be a very different take on the superhero genre, in my opinion. And I feel like I, I, I like it, man. I really do like the trailer. I, I agree with you. I, I completely agree in terms of basically where it's coming off. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to this or who are interested in seeing just where Logan ends up at the box office and whether it's a critical and finan- financial success is it, it definitely does resemble The Last of Us. It has it's seemingly uh, a different take, a more artistic take with the character and the um, artistry involved. But it also it also raises the question a lot because this is a this is a i guess a, a side project a side story if you will to a larger universe and it's really hard to and i want to kind of delve into this before we go any further with the whole logan and its marketing and its potential box office gross we'll get to at the end uh but you know this is a this is a side project or a side story it seems like dealing with i guess you would have to say dealing with a, a, a larger universe that has been kind of strung together you know um these these large interconnected universes are all the rage and fox has really done their best and i would argue i think i would argue uh probably second fiddle to marvel but probably better than most to kind of hamstring and just tie together these seemingly unrelated films that take place with the same characters in different time periods into different uh, like a, a more refined story, both with both with uh, the Wolverine back in 2013 and then 2014's uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, which basically erased a lot of the continuity. It brings up where exactly does Logan take place? And we, we can talk about that a little bit longer. But also, uh, how would people are going to react to Logan? Uh, like As you kind of said, swan song to the whole career of Hugh Jackman playing this wolverine character for the last you know hell almost two decades now uh going going into it and i feel like the only way to kind of delve into that is kind of look at where this series has gone not just with the x-men movies although uh, at a lesser degree but also the fact that this is the last in a trilogy a very very unrelated and very very unconnected films i guess you would have to say uh, you know, starting with 2009's the uh, X Men Origins Wolverine, which, as you probably remember, and I feel like a lot of people remember, is is and was a uh, although a critical failure, uh, a big financial success. Other than the fact that Fox has claimed since then that the premature leaks of the film uh, somewhat cost them in their own estimates, which is hardly ever, I guess you could ever say, either reliable or even to an even a greater extent, uh, true. Uh, they say that they probably have lost twenty nine million dollars in all of this, or, and that and that leak because of the number of people who actually watched it and downloaded it. Uh, me being one of them, as much as I, it's like. Uh, but I did see the movie. I did see the movie in theaters. I was. Uh, uh, I feel like my experience was not un, not universal, but probably. Uh, resonant to a lot of people who had seen it the people who wanted to see that movie uh saw it in theaters uh, and the people who didn't want to see it 
probably just watch it out of curiosity and maybe even were persuaded to go see it in theaters because uh, they wanted to see how it looked when everything was said and done. But anyway, um, we do know that uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine uh, back in 2009 opened to uh, $85 million and it actually ended its domestic run with a little less than half of that. Um, a, a, a little or a little bit more than half of that, I mean, uh, with $179 million, which represented about 48% of its overall box office worldwide with $373 million. It was not, as I said, a critical uh, success with basically 38% of critics thinking that it was even uh, remotely a good movie. Yeah. And, and more so with audiences uh, on Rotten Tomatoes have... 58% of actual people thinking that it's a good movie. <laughs> but uh, And then, so that kind of stalled. I think a lot of the X-Men stuff stalled going forward because uh, they had that movie and then they had First Class and then you had them retread or kind of try to revamp the the entity that was Wolverine and kind of making a very loosely connected sequel that was only teased in a uh, if I remember right, because of the leaks, they had several different they had several different indications of like these post credit scenes that were mixed. So you never know you didn't see one post credit scene uh, in one theater and maybe another one in another. So you would have to go see the movie again. It was just a, a cheap ploy to go get people to go see the movie multiple times for the sake that to see a different. Uh, stinger at the end, but correct uh, me if I'm wrong. Ultimate, but didn't uh, X Men First Class go in with a weaker budget than the Origins Wolverine and almost make sort of around the same amount of money globally? It did. Um, I, I I think it, it did. I, I I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but it it didn't. Obviously, uh, the 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 X Men movies have treaded a whole lot of water in terms of being just successful enough and just uh, beloved enough to keep going. And and that's what I want to kind of talk about uh, going forward, because when we look at the Wolverine, uh, I think and I feel like uh, with something really interesting with the Rotten Tomatoes and audience score on Rotten Tomatoes being both uh, 69% of that, it was interesting to see how it was more of a universally beloved movie to a degree. I mean, at least it was fresh on both sides, and it still represented a sixty or a twenty twenty six percent drop uh, domestically from its predecessor. And a lot of that, in my indication or at least my opinion, stems from the fact that while Wolverine is a very interesting character, this was the I, I believe this was the fifth film where he was the central focus of the narrative going into the sixth film of the series where he's the narrative focus with days of future past and then obviously we had we had apocalypse where he created a cameo he had a cameo scene the same way that he had a cameo scene in first class so there's there's indication here even though we have dropping in of the budget there's an indication here that uh you know, as much as Wolverine looks like an artistic uptick from, obviously, Origins, but maybe even so of the Wolverine, uh, we have to wonder whether or not the character himself is, I guess, too overused, too saturated at this point in order to actually draw audiences into the picture. What are your thoughts on that? I agree that he is oversaturated, and I feel like he's been overused, but the character, mm-hmm. he's been overused, but at the same time, though, I think they're self-aware of that. I think they know that. I think they have uh, oversaturated the Wolverine character, and I feel like that's going to come into play with this. Like, when you look at that trailer, again, going back to the trailer, when you look at the trailer, very, like, just looking at, like, the facial expressions, I feel like... Hugh Jackman is going to give a very different approach to the Wolverine character. I feel like he's going to give... I feel like they're going to kind of just say, fuck it, excuse my language, and kind of just give some creative expression with the character. Maybe go a little bit out of its comfort zone. And I think, I think, with the respect that people have for Hugh Jackman and the respect that they've had for what he's done for the franchise, I feel like that'll be okay. 
You know what I mean? I feel like that will be fine. I don't think we're going to get a lot of people screaming, oh, that's not how Wolverine acts in the con. You know what I mean? It's, I think we're going to be okay with that. And I think him delivering a performance like that in a very different type of film. Like, I mean, I, I talked to you about this off air. I mentioned in the 2017 film. This looks like it's going to be a very different film. And I feel like this is going to be very, very close interactions between uh, Patrick Stewart and the little girl that's... Uh, in the movie, I forget her name, but um, mm-hmm. I feel like there's going to be very close interactions with them, and it'll be a very different Wolverine, but I think that's okay. I think we're going to be okay with that, and I'm going to respect what they do with them, but I think they are self-aware, and he will be giving a completely different approach, which will help the audience who may think like us and think that he's a bit oversaturated and that he's been overused, you know? But mm-hmm. No, I, I I understand where you're coming from, and and I, I, I do... I do have to kind of, I, I guess there's some uh, parallels that we can draw between this film and that of uh, Deadpool, which ended up being a huge success yes. last year, um, you know, with being the highest grossing R-rated film, uh, not highest grossing R-rated film, but highest opening R-rated film with $132 million back in, may I may I remind everyone, March, I believe. <laughs> Oh no! It was February. It was it was Valentine's Day back in back in uh, back on Valentine's Day of 2016, which is was a huge surprise for a lot of people. And then and then uh, ultimately ending with 363 million dollars domestically and 783 million dollars worldwide. Damn. Uh, yeah, and being a universally beloved movie with 84 percent and 90 percent from the audience. Uh, 84 from critics and with the trailer although given uh, most notably that it has been around for a very long time the official Fox trailer on YouTube has over 41 million views at this point uh, just to kind of give some indication of how Wolverine is stacking up although we keep mentioning the trailer it's basically all we really know at this point versus other numbers that we have from the other X-Men films that kind of break down in certain levels uh, we have not seen the second trailer yet. We are recording this before the second trailer drops, which might be in any couple days now. Uh, so we're just going to have to wait to see how successful that is and how uh, social media basically interacts with this. But uh, in comparison, the Logan trailer at this point, having been out for only around two months, has garnered over 70 mil- uh, 17 million views, which in and of itself is really impressive, especially when you consider, like we talked about before, just the unique uh, strategy that they put out with with the with just the somber feel with very little story no humor uh no anything it seems kind of counterproductive but in an artistic way uh you know with marvel always needing cool action scenes and and like funny quips and all this to actually sell, sell their movie and then you have uh in the, in the same light you have DC even kind of trying to copy Marvel now with their DC trailer and their uh, with their Justice League trailer and their Wolf and their Wonder Woman trailer having more humor than we've seen in most other DC products in terms of their marketing and it's it's just interesting to me to see Logan play a completely different message. I don't know whether the movie's going to have any humor or not, but they're obviously not selling it that at this point and it's working for them. The Johnny the Johnny Cash song Hurt playing in the background is somber. It's it's somewhat depressive. It reminds people a lot of other things that have come before it, very successful, very well told stories and everything. And it just it does make me wonder whether or not like Deadpool the interesting marketing uh, the interesting kind of differentiating marketing is going to lead to the success, or was Deadpool something different? Because not only was Deadpool not a established character such that Wolverine is, but it was also funny and poking fun at the whole concept of social media yeah. and all this. I mean, the internet is a hard thing to grasp in terms of what's going to be successful. You can't necessarily always base it off of number of tweets or number of views on the trailer or anything disproportionately that's not true and uh it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not uh logan is something that can actually pick up the slack what are your thoughts like is do you think that there is any correlation between the way that fox is 
uh, promoting Wolverine as something a little bit different, or uh, Logan as something a little bit different, the same way they did with Deadpool. Well, obviously, yeah, they promoted Deadpool a bit differently compared to like your Civil Wars and to your Iron Mans and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. now they're doing that with Logan, but the difference I feel like is <laughs> with Deadpool. I think it had an it had an audience. You know what I mean? Like it had people who were wanting to see this character portrayed the correct way on the big screen so when the trailers dropped when the promotion happened you know people were riding that train they were you know i remember there were a few people saying ah oh, it's probably gonna flop uh they won't be able to capture a deadpool character the right way you know but it mm-hmm. was done right you know pe- most people still rode along with the promotion they were still right there with it with logan though i've kind of seen a different point of view like i know a few film uh uh, YouTubers who have mentioned what we've talked about how they're kind of just a little bit over the whole Wolverine character it's a bit overused and stuff so with these trailers I've seen over oh, just one trailer with this trailer the way that I've seen some people react to it is that oh it's a Wolverine film okay you know that we'll go mm-hmm. check it out but that's what I mentioned before I feel like this is going to be one of those movies where it's word of mouth because yeah they can keep putting out these trailers and they can keep making them epic because I do think the first trailer was epic that's one of the reasons why I think it's going to do well just by looking at it like something that catches my attention real like a lot and anything <laughs> that I see is <laughs> basically the way the surroundings of that film look you know what I mean I'm very uh I love like from dusk till dawn desert type of situations you know out in the open field true detective i love a lot of films like that so that caught my attention the way it's shaped like we're not in a city thank god you know what i mean every superhero movie that takes place Mm -hmm. in the city thank god we're not in that you know thank god we're like in this kind of like out in the open and it looks like they're kind of like in the woods and the forest and then like they're they're in the desert at one point too so i'm very happy that we're getting that apocalyptic feel to it and i feel like this promotion for it like i said i know i feel like they are self-aware they are going to have Hugh Jackman give a different performance, a different approach to the character. And we see that in the trailer, you know what I mean? So, yeah, they are mm-hmm. taking a different approach. Is it the same as Deadpool? No. But at the same time, I feel like I feel like opening night, eh, opening weekend, thumbs up. I feel like it's going to pick up in the weekend just by word of mouth. But with Deadpool, though, you got to remember, though, like I said, there was just an audience for that. You know, people were kind of yearning for that. You know what I mean? People wanted to see that, but the fan base anyways. With Wolverine, people were just kind of going, oh, Logan, Wolverine movie, an X-Men movie, you know, because people were kind of disappointed with Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I understand where you're coming from. And uh, you kind of touched on another one of my questions I wanted to ask or kind of touch on before uh, we get to our predictions at the end i personally feel like the darker tone is something that really works for the trailer like you mentioned it's something a little bit different as i mentioned before not something that we see a lot but i'm wondering whether or not this darker tone is something that is going to start i guess is it going to be a detriment to the film or is it going to be is it going to be a detriment or is it going to be something that people look at as like i said artistic or intricate its own kind of thing different uh enough difference between this and the original ones that we've seen or any other x-men movie that we've seen that gets people interest i mean people have talked about it being an art maybe even an oscar contender because of how um i guess how somber it is and just good i guess like just good so do you think it's going to hurt it uh do you think the emphasis on darker retellings or darker grittier films not only with comic book movies with uh, you know batman versus superman being a very dark and gritty film making bat or superman and man of steel dark the dark knight rises trilogy uh or anything like that do you think that this is played out is that one of the reasons marvel's doing well in deadpool did well and even it looks like now dc's even trying to change its tune do you think it what are your thoughts Okay, first thing first, I'm going to say this is just going to be for this film. I don't think Fox has any type of plan to take on this dark role and kind of take on this whole, uh, I guess people call DC dark and gritty for a while, you know, before they started doing the whole comedy stick. So mm-hmm. I think this is just going to be for this film. For any future movies in the future, like any movies in the future, I don't think they're going to go with this dark tone. I feel like this was specifically chosen for 
Logan, and I feel like we're going to see a lot more as far as like when we actually see the movie, I think we're going to see that dark tone from the characters, and like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is the last hoorah for Patrick Stewart and for Hugh Jackman, so I feel like this darker tone is going to suit them well because of their interactions. They can actually show their chops, you know what I mean? They're not going to be dropping mm -hmm. jokes and stuff like that every now and then we're not going to get maybe maybe i'm gonna get a little overboard here but i don't see that being a theme for this i don't feel like we're going to get that sarcastic uh logan or that sarcastic wolverine that we'd be getting you know what i mean where he kind of just brings comedy with him and his sarcastic mm -hmm. remarks and his jokes and stuff we're not going to get that in my opinion at least from this first trailer remember guys recording before the second trailer comes out but <laughs> i feel like this is just going to be a one-time thing for them because this is their last hoorah and they can go out together on this film. Will it affect the others? No, I feel like Civil War and all of them and Marvel doing their thing, they're going to stick with what's been <laughs> taking them to the top and uh, cementing them at, at their pedestal. DC, I feel like they probably will continue with the comedy. And for uh, Fox, any movies in the future, I feel like they're just going to stick with the regular formula. I feel like this is a one-time thing, in my opinion, for Logan, which, which I, makes it I, special, I, in my opinion. I, I, I understand where you're coming from with that, especially since after Apocalypse came out. And just even though that movie has its flaws, it just necessarily felt like the most comic booky movie of all comic book movies that I've ever seen. Yeah. Just, there was some semblance of strangeness to it that almost felt too colorful and too cartoonish for its own reality. Yeah. And while I feel like that necessarily hurt the film, I because uh, it definitely the same thing can be said about Deadpool it was kind of larger than life at that point but it was a little bit more realistic and I'm not necessarily sure whether or not that was an indication of why Apocalypse did bad especially coming off of the success of Days of Future Past and the success of Deadpool the, the phenomenal success of Deadpool or maybe they're just two different movies we just never really know um Obviously, Apocalypse was not a very good film. Uh, if you ask a lot of people, including myself, I, I didn't like it as much. It just felt a little hamstrung together, and I feel like we deserved a lot better, especially if they're going to reintroduce some of the main characters that they apparently probably want to continue the franchise with. We were not given a good introduction to them, yeah. and we're not necessarily sure where they're going to take us, although I think yesterday they did leak the title for the last, the next one, and I'm, I'm not necessarily sure what that was. I can't remember. But uh, so the thing is, is when we talk about Logan, though, in terms of darker tone or just kind of a different film, different feel, uh, the, one of the questions I have, one of these last questions I have is, when you talk about the naming scheme, uh, do you feel like it's going to hurt the film? Personally, I feel like it could possibly hurt the film that it's called Logan, and with the trailer being set up the way it does, and don't get me wrong with Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart being as iconic as they are in their respective roles here in this franchise, uh, it would be hard for people like us to look at this trailer and not kind of realize that it is, in fact, an X-Men movie, uh, but with the different tone like we've talked about and the different naming structure, uh, is it something that's going to hurt the film? People aren't necessarily going to know straight off the bat that this is actually a Wolverine movie. Uh, who Who's Logan? This, looks, this doesn't look anything like Origins or the Wolverine or even Deadpool or Apocalypse or anything that we've seen before. Um, wonder if that's a turnoff for people just in general. It might be, and that might what affect the opening night. I'm not too sure if you agree with that, but I feel like people aren't going to exactly know. Like my mom, for example, very casual fan. She, like if she's just in town, she stops by the movie theater, she's probably not going to know that Logan is an X-Men film. You know what I mean? She's probably going to see uh, Hugh Jackman on the cover, but she's not going to say, oh, maybe buy, let me buy a ticket to watch this X-Men film. You know, she's not going to think that. I think opening weekend will be better because once people uh, actually realize this is an X-Men film, and I feel like it's going to be good i hope to god it's good <laughs> i feel like it's gonna be good so that will help as well but yes i feel like the naming scheme probably isn't too good of an idea especially if they're looking for high opening night numbers maybe they could have just gone with wolverine i don't know again you know but logan it does seem kind of uh a bit what's the word help me out real <laughs> it, it, it's a bit underwhelming yeah there you go there you go like, perfect word there you go um, that kind of leads me into my last point I wanted to talk about with this. In terms of 
actually the naming structure and all this other stuff, whether people are going to know if this is actually an X-Men movie or Wolverine movie. I have to say, and I give a lot of respect to Fox for this, uh, obviously when you talk about superheroes in the latest, you know, if the, the last decade or two that we've had of superhero movies basically ruling the box office, uh, I guess it's a throw up, a toss up between who's been more impactful for the entire genre uh, in terms of obviously individual movies, but individual people in their respective roles. It would be a really hard debate to determine whether uh, Hugh Jackman or Robert Downey Jr. or any of these other people that you want to throw up into those that debate who has been more impactful for superhero movies in general. So having someone like Hugh Jackman deciding that he wants to I, I would assume that he wants to retire from playing this role, wants to move on and do other things. Obviously, he's getting rather old. It's hard to keep up the body as you get older um, and everything like that. I give a lot of credence to Fox for not for allowing this to be such a simple naming scheme and to not shove X-Men somewhere in there, even if it's an X-Men story or X-Men Origins or something, just to give that audience recognition now whether or not that's that they have they they don't have just absolute faith in the film is what we want they don't care if the general audience can assume whether or not it is an x-men movie it's just a good film and that you know in an idealistic world should be the indication of what movie makes money and what movie doesn't but we don't necessarily live in that world that's why we have things like x-men origins or a twilight story or a hunger games story or something when they have different movie titles so there's at least some semblance on the poster that gives people if not visually a uh, semblance that this is actually uh, a continuation or somehow tangibly connected to one video or another another movie series so i appreciate the the courage they have there but when it comes to the fact that this is probably more than likely Patrick Stewart's final film as Professor Xavier in the X-Men universe, uh, it makes me wonder recently with all the success of Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds' insistence that he wants to do a Wolverine movie with Hugh Jackman and just the recent social media outburst of that with the rumors that Deadpool was going to be showing up in Logan and then both the director and Hugh Jackman himself and Ryan Reynolds all had to come out and say no that's not true this is a Wolverine film uh for like just in in general so do you think last thing do you think that this is the last Wolverine film with Hugh Jackman yes and I'm gonna state something here this is not an X-Men film. This is not a Wolverine film. This is a Hugh Jackman film. If you get that, applause. <laughs> this is a Hugh Jackman film, and I feel like... I just feel like... What, what was your question again? My bad. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I feel like... I feel that... While I, I agree with you, I agree. I think that's I think that's an eloquent way to say this. It's a Hugh Jackman film, not a Wolverine film. When you talk about this series being, this movie being a swan song to his career uh, of playing Wolverine, I feel like that is a good indication. He, if this is going to be his last one, it will be probably the best of what we've seen. He's very emotional about it, but my point is, is this movie comes out, it does gangbusters, um, Fox has... They know the interest is there. They know that people are sad to see him go. They also have Deadpool waiting in the wings for a yes. third film or some kind of a team-up crossover film, especially with their aspirations to make a Marvel Universe. Uh, do you not see them getting a dump truck full of money and you know dumping it on Hugh Jackman's lawn and have him come back? And is that what we want? I would, you know, I'll, I'll state it. This will be his last film. I don't think no matter how much money I follow Hugh Jackman on Instagram, bro. He's a good guy. <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> I don't think no matter how much money they wave in front of him, and I don't even think just to the respect of the Wolverine character from his point of view, I don't think he would come back. You know what I mean? Like I mentioned before, I think I said this like a thousand times in this video. This is his last hoorah with Patrick Stewart. This is his last hoorah as Wolverine, and I feel like 
this is C. Jackman film, dude. And I don't think no matter what happens, whether they create the universe, whether they want to do a crossover, whether hell, if all hell breaks loose and Marvel actually all comes together, even then, I don't think he will come and do an Avengers film. You know what I mean? I just feel like he's not mm-hmm. going to come back. I feel like this is his last film, bro. Like, I just feel like it. I mean. I I have different, like, that's that's the interest. Like, I have a completely different thought. I, I feel like he is the type of person... I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I think he's actually a, a very, he seems like a nice guy, very uh, talented entertainer. I feel like if there's a right project, he'll come back. Although, if this is the right project, I, I feel like I have to see the film. I feel like a lot of us have to see the film before we determine whether or not this was the right thing to end yeah. on. And obviously, everything we've seen thus far makes it at least seem like such. To me, at least so, to me. Yeah. So... With all that said, guys, I know it's been a little long, but like I said, open discussion, just kind of a, a laid-back discussion. Uh, I have here in my hand right now my predictions, at least somewhat mathematically looked at and kind of putting into a sense everything that we've talked about, just how I feel like this movie is going to do uh, domestically. And if... if, uh, uh, if uh, if MJ wants to share what he might think, you know, pie in the sky and not really having thought about it, just everything that we've talked about here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have, do you have any, do you have any idea like in, in terms of opening, uh, opening day, opening weekend, you know, final domestic box office, that type of stuff. Uh, if I had to take a guess, if I had to just think about it, when you look at Deadpool, how much it garnered worldwide, I would probably say globally and worldwide that Logan could do could do between four hundred to five hundred million. I would think worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. Uh, I think that is a. I think that's a respectable number. Honestly, I, I definitely do uh, because we don't know whether or not we don't know whether or not how successful this movie is. We don't know how tired people are of wolverine at this point or whether they're going to even be willing to give it another chance as i talked about yeah. earlier there was a drop there's a 26 percent drop domestically between origins and the wolverine so we're just gonna have to it wait kind of decides see. on how good this film is like it could have a situation with the whole john wick you know people walked in oh it's a keanu reeves movie boom boom action and then they walked out that was a good ass movie you know they and they gave some <laughs> good, and they gave good reviews for it you know so that could happen here and then you have people oh okay that Wolverine movie was good you know that movie was all right let's go check it out you know so you it kind of goes by word of mouth you know so mm-hmm. yeah i mean there you go no i agree and uh, mine and in, in order to understand where i'm going to be coming from here i feel like you have to have a semblance, a little knowledge of how box office numbers work and how you can take the opening weekend and kind of determine how much a money a movie is going to make. But I'll do my best to kind of simplify it here. Um, as lo- as MJ and I have discussed uh, time and time again in this video and how what he's stated is it probably isn't going to be a huge film from day one. But in terms of actually picking up steam and being a decent film that makes a decent amount of money for you know, not only the respective franchise, but just the respective film in its in its uh, genre. I personally believe that we are going to see somewhere between uh, splitting the difference between Origins' thirty four million opening day and the Wolverines' twenty million opening day uh, back in two thousand nine and two thousand thirteen, respectively. I best I I personally believe that we have an indication that. Logan will be opening up somewhere around $28 million and ending its first weekend with a very respectable for a a rated R film, $75 million uh, going forward. And then because the $28 million times $75 million divided by $28 million, very, you know, not taking into account any other type of money, just big dollar amounts, uh, you know, thousands or hundreds, not looking into that. But looking into that, if you take $75 million and you divide it by $28 million, you get a weekend, a first weekend multiplier. And what you do from there is the first weekend multiplier is 2.67%. And, or it's a ratio, 2.67 to 1. 
And what you do there is you take 2.67 and you divide it or, or you, you times it by 75 million the opening weekend. And it gives you an indication of how well the movie is going to do uh, going forward domestically, at least. And that will put you a little over 200 million. So my prediction here is we're going to be seeing a split of an opening day between the first two movies in this particular franchise, the spinoff franchise from the bigger X-Men universe. And we're going to see this movie inch its way. Uh, very respectively, for a $200 million film to a $200 million total domestically, in which uh, it will join uh, as the 10th film in the X-Men franchise, it's going to join uh, the other four, which ended up making over $200 million, the, them being them being uh, Deadpool, X-Men 2, The Last Stand, and Days of Future Past, and it won't be the most successful part or successful film in the franchise, but definitely in the own Wolverine franchise. I expect this film, with the garnering of the hype and everything that we've seen thus far, to probably inch its way out into two hundred million dollars domestically, and be the most successful Wolverine film. Now, in terms of worldwide budgets or foreign to grosses, it's a little bit harder to gauge, as we saw with the original uh, X Men movie. It made it made a respectable amount of money, uh, and then it made even more money, uh, respectively, uh, for the sequel. But also that was placed in Japan. Uh, foreign markets tend to like when they have kind of movies based around their country with their actors yeah. and everything. So it was sold that way. Uh so I feel just re realistically, if it is a good film, if it's kind of a universally beloved film, we're I think you're right. We could see it gross somewhere around three hundred million to four hundred million dollars, ending this film's total with like five hundred to six hundred million dollars. That to me, that's my. It's a reasonable uh, one because, like I said, word of mouth, people could find out that it's good. Secondly, a most likely one hundred percent, ninety nine percent chance that it is Hugh Jackman's last performance, and then you got to mm -hmm. add in the fact that it is. Just it's an X Men film, you know. You have a, a cult following who will just go watch the X Men films, you know what I mean? So there you go. I mean, mm -hmm. plus it's reasonable because it's not as much as Deadpool, but then again, when you factor in all those points, you know what I mean? It could still reach over a uh, half a billion, you know. So yeah, I, I feel like a half a billion, like you said, uh, half a billion in my in my opinion as well as very respectable for this film something that they would look forward to if it can inch out deadpool numbers if it inches out you know kind of days of future past numbers and that i i feel like i said before it's going to be too much of a draw for them to uh, for fox just to give it up they're going to want another wolverine film and if they can pair him off with deadpool which is something that their star for deadpool ryan reynolds wants uh, very much so and i feel like it's something that fans want. I mean, obviously, it's been trending for a while, so we're just going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to really wait and see, but it's going to be really interesting to see where this all ends up. Obviously, Wolverine will not be the biggest film of 2017. If you want my predictions on that, I'll link it at the very end of this video. But anyway, guys, uh, it's been kind of a long discussion. I hope y'all really enjoyed it if you've listened this long, and please make sure to tell us what you think in the comment section below, how much you think Logan's going to make, and any reasons that you think that we didn't cover in this video. MJ, do you have anything left to say? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what is it? <laughs> uh, hashtag down below, hashtag Logan. Hashtag Logan. There you go. That was so stupid. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, if you like this video, make sure to tell us in the comment section below because I would really like to do it uh, again. These type of videos are really fun for me. Um, I like to kind of share knowledge and just my own expectations of how films are going to do and everything. And it's always fun to just have somebody on that I can talk to. The anything. ego so, on anyway, this guy. Anyway, guys. Share some knowledge, dude. Like you're a teacher, you're smarter than all of us. I want to share. I want to share some knowledge. It's, it's real fun. Anyway, guys, we're gonna catch you in the next one of this, or the next Dragon Ball discussion, or whatever is coming out next. So I hope y'all enjoyed it.